Hi, welcome to Movie Summary, good to have you here. Today's summary is about two of the world's largest car manufacturers. We know them to make the fastest race cars these days, but their rivalry goes way way back to the beginning of time when dinosaurs were still around. Just kidding, that was a joke. Take some time to pay attention to this character, and let us know in the comment section what moral lesson you may have picked from him. It is 1963. Carol Shelby, a race car driver who has just won the Le Mans, is introduced to us. The Le Mans 24-hour endurance race is held annually in France and is the world's oldest active endurance race event. Carol is seen speaking with his doctor, who advises him to retire from racing, stating that he is fortunate not to have suffered a heart attack during his last race. Next, we see Ken Miles working hard in an auto repair shop, he is also a racer, but not a well-known one, so he doesn't make much money from racing. He is very passionate about cars and spends a lot of time in his garage repairing and fixing them to make ends meet for his wife and son. Men in suits converge with a sense of urgency, they are all employees of Ford Motors, and their boss, Henry Ford, has summoned all of them to the assembly plant for a meeting. He begins by telling a story about his grandfather, Henry Ford I, and then challenges all employees to present a new idea to him within a week or risk being fired. We learn later in the story that Ken and Carol are friends. Carol no longer races and now runs a car dealership while also coaching Ken on the side. Carol's coaching pays off as Ken, an intelligent driver, wins the Daytona 500. This is also a 24-hour race event that takes place yearly in Florida, just like the Le Mans, but on a local level with lower league drivers and a seemingly less complex race track. Carol hopes Ken attracts the attention of big brands, but Ken's reputation for being short-tempered and rude makes him an unappealing option. Meanwhile, it's a new week at Ford, and executives are pushing new ideas to boost growth and sales. Lee Lecocca, one of them, comes up with the idea that the company should move into racing and potentially start creating race cars, as at the time, people were attracted to sex appeal, which led them to seek for flashy and sleeky appearing vehicles, which were usually race cars. He claims that if they build race vehicles and actively participate in racing events, this will instantly serve as advertising against their competitors. Henry likes the idea, but instead of developing their own race cars, he sends Lecocca and his team to Italy with the intention of buying the Ferrari company and acquiring the rights to their sleek design. When they arrive in Italy, Enzo Ferrari, the Ferrari company's head considers their bid as insulting and tells them to shove it up their ass, referring to their boss, Henry Ford, as a fat pig. When they return, they disclose to their boss the details of their meeting with Enzo, including the insults. This gets Henry heated up and motivated to beat Ferrari more than ever, so he orders Lee to put together a team and launch Ford's own racing branch. Carol Shelby is the only American driver to have won the Le Mans, so he is approached by Lee to head Ford's emerging racing team. Thrilled by the offer, Carol agrees and naturally goes to the best driver he knows, Ken, asking him to also join his team, and into time Shelby assembles a whole team and they begin getting the car into shape for their first race. As time goes on Ford Vice President Lee Bebby begin to notice Ken's rash and crude attitude, he points this out to Carol telling him that Ken's profile doesn't match that of the company and his unpredictable character doesn't represent the brand well, so they will have to find some other driver. Carol tries to explain to him that Ken is the best driver for the job as he also helped in designing the actual car for the race, but this fall on deaf ears and Leo insists that they must find a new driver. With the command coming from high above, there is obviously little Carol can do so he breaks the news to Ken, telling him he wouldn't be going to France with them for the race. Feeling betrayed, Ken stays back at the workshop to listen to the race on his radio while the rest of the team travel to France for the race. As expected, Ford lose the race and Henry is left infuriated, so he invites Carol to the office asking him to give a reason why the entire racing division of the company should not be shut down considering they shamefully lost the race to their opposition, Ferrari. Carol uses the chance to convince Henry Ford that Ken is the man for the job and he should be behind the wheels at the next race, Henry agrees but Leo doesn't seem to be happy with this decision. After what happened regarding the last race, Carol goes to Ken's house to apologize and share the good news of him coming back to the team as the driver. Ken joins up with the team and tireless work begins in preparation for the next Le Mans. While all this is going on, Lecocca finds out in the office that Leo is trying to convince Henry Ford to put him in charge of the race division, Lecocca believes Leo is doing this so he can remove Ken as driver. Kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel to support our work. Thank you. Apparently Leo and Ken had a conversation when they first met, Ken had insulted one of Leo's car designs calling it a secretary's car. This hurt Leo and is the reason why he is trying so hard to get Ken off the race. Lecocca goes on to inform Carol of what is happening at the office and warns him that Leo may try to influence a change of driver on his next visit to the workshop. 
True to his words Henry Ford and other Ford executives come around the workshop to inspect the progress of work, and of course Leo is with them, but before he can even get to saying much, Carol locks him up in a section of the workshop and asks Henry Ford out for a test drive of one of the race cars, Carol drives at an immense speed somewhat intentionally to make Henry experience how terrifying racing could be. Just as he stops the car, Henry bursts into tears confessing that he previously had no idea how mind-wrecking driving a race car could be and in that moment Carol offers him a deal. Let Ken race at Daytona, and if he wins the race that year then he gets to drive at the Le Mans, and if he doesn't win the Daytona, then Henry could take full possession of his auto dealership company. He basically just bet his auto dealership company on Ken Miles, such was the level of trust in his friend. At Daytona, a second Ford team is assembled by Leo, he picks his own driver who he believes will rival Ken, there's some sort of competition between Leo and Carol's teams to see who made the best car and ultimately to know who has the better driver. However, Ken wins the race automatically securing his place at the Le Mans. In France it is race day and Ken, Carol, and their entire team is present, Ken's wife and kid couldn't make the trip to France but they watch on from their television at home. Enzo Ferrari is also there with the Ferrari team, and so is Henry Ford. The race is about to begin and there are three Ford drivers among the racers, one being Ken and the other two obviously being headed by Leo. The race begins and Ken has a slow start because of an issue with his door, it doesn't shut properly. The first lap is in progress and the other drivers are speeding out of sight, the door still does not shut and this distraction keeps him further behind. After the first lap, he stops at the pits and gets his door fixed, prompting him to step on the gas as hard as he can, so he can cover up the distance between him and the other cars. He has lost a lot of time and in a desperate need to catch up he accelerates so much that his brake burns out, he is now about four cars away from the leading driver, but it will be too risky to continue because his brakes have gone bad. He stops at the pits and Carol instructs the crew to change the entire brake system of the car. This happens to be the first time in the history of the competition that such major changes will be made to a car mid-race. This makes the Italians at Ferrari furious and they call the attention of the officials to it, Carol points out that the rule book says they are allowed to change parts during the race, although the book doesn't specify what parts. True to his words it is so stated in the rule book and they go ahead with the brake change. The race goes on and eventually Ken gets in sight of the leading car which happens to be a Ferrari, just before Ken overtakes the driver, the car spins and crashes out of the race leaving Ken in first place. He goes ahead to have the perfect lap and he gets ahead of everyone by at least two laps causing him to break a record of the fastest lap in Le Mans history. Leo sees Ken's victory and is troubled because his own Ford driver is far behind Ken in the race, so he goes to Henry and proposes that the best picture for the organization is for all three of their vehicles to cross the finish line together. Henry, not seeing through Leo's tricks, agrees, and Leo gives the order to Carol, who strongly opposes the idea. While Ken is waiting for his tires to be changed, Carol delivers the information to him, but he reminds him that it is his race, and he will support him no matter what decision he makes. Regardless of Leo's instruction, Ken rushes to victory right away, but he eventually yields and slows down, permitting the other Ford drivers to catch up and they cross the finish line together. Everybody celebrates Ken's success until a detail is uncovered, he started the race behind one of the Ford vehicles that crossed the finish line with him, this consequently places him in second, making the driver of Leo's group, first and him, second. Carol is enraged, however Ken doesn't care so much, he accepts it and the two go off together. Weeks after the race, Ken and Carol get to testing a new car design at the workshop, Ken goes on a test drive in the vehicle without wearing any safety gear, and in the heat of the moment the car crashes and Ken dies almost immediately. Months go by and Carol goes to Ken's family's home and finds his child, Peter, whom he gives the wrench that Ken tossed at him in remembrance. He gets into his vehicle, and in spite of his condition, hurries off into the distance. Ken and Carol's vehicles proceed to win the Le Mans for the following four years and Ken gets inducted posthumously into the Racing Hall of Fame. The End Thank you for watching, don't forget to comment and subscribe.